Joe is a cleaner with a metropolitan public transport system. He cleans up in places where there is a risk of being cut by broken glass or stuck with a needle from a used syringe. Joe worries about the risk of diseases caused by contact with infected blood. Maria works in the maintenance department of a manufacturing plant. The company has an excellent safety record, but minor accidents happen. If Maria found a co-worker bleeding, she knows she would want to give first aid. But with all this talk of HIV and hepatitis B and C, Maria wonders, is it safe to help? Joe and Maria are not alone. Whether you work in communications, manufacturing, retail, government, emergency services, education, health care, the armed forces, or any other occupation, you will one day have to deal with a situation which involves potentially infected blood. The decisions you make and the actions you take could literally mean the difference between life and death. Some occupations involve the risk of exposure to potentially infected blood. These include occupations where employees are required to perform first aid as part of their jobs and occupations where employees may be exposed to potentially infected materials. Exposure could include cleaning up blood from an injury. Blood which is infected may contain blood-borne pathogens. What are blood-borne pathogens? They are microorganisms that can cause diseases, including potentially fatal diseases such as hepatitis B and C and HIV. They can be carried in infected blood and bodily fluids. You can be vaccinated against hepatitis B, but there is currently no vaccine or cure for hepatitis C or HIV. The best way to avoid dealing with potentially infected blood is to follow safe workplace practices and to have safety engineered into your workplace. Identify and remove hazards before they can cause injury. Make sure warning signs and labels are up to date and clearly visible. Good housekeeping practices will also reduce your chances of exposure to blood-borne pathogens. Keep your workplace neat and clean to help prevent accidents. If you have a job that requires the use of personal protective equipment, put it on. Personal protective equipment only works when you use it according to the manufacturer's instructions. It is not easy to catch a blood-borne disease. Blood-borne pathogens must find a direct route of entry into the body for infection to be possible. The infected blood or bodily fluid must enter through a break in the skin, such as a cut or a burn, or through breaks caused by dermatitis, acne or other skin rash. Another possible direct route of entry is for bodily fluids to splash into the eyes. You cannot catch a blood-borne disease from an infected person touching you, or sneezing, or coughing on you, or from using the same cup or glass. You won't catch a blood-borne disease from a toilet seat, you should not, however, share razor blades and toothbrushes which may contain blood or bodily fluids. You may be exposed to blood-borne pathogens if your skin is penetrated by a needle, broken glass or other sharp object that has been contaminated by infected material. Cleaners handling rubbish can often be cut by broken glass or other sharp objects. Take care when handling garbage containers. Wear protective gloves when disposing of feminine hygiene products. Never pick up needles or broken glass with your hands, whether or not you see blood on them. Use a broom and dustpan or tongs. Don't carry the needles or broken glass to a container. Bring the container to the needles or broken glass. These and other sharp objects should be placed in a puncture-resistant, leak-proof sharps container, which must not be overfilled. So how does Joe know if the needles or broken glass he picks up are contaminated with infected material? And what should Maria do if one of her co-workers is injured? The answer is, Joe must assume all needles and broken glass could be contaminated with blood or bodily fluids. Maria must assume she could be exposed to blood or bodily fluids from an injured co-worker. To be safe, Maria and Joe must treat all blood and other bodily fluids as if they were infected. Joe, Maria, and every one of us should practice what are known as universal precautions, both at work and outside work, when exposure to someone else's bodily fluids can occur. This means that whenever there is the possibility of exposure to any bodily fluid, such as blood, vomit or saliva, the fluid should be handled as if it were infected. There should always be some type of barrier between you and the fluid, a barrier designed so that no fluid can get through. 
disposable latex gloves and plastic face shields are good examples. If you can, carry a pair of disposable gloves at all times or have a pair close at hand. Put them on when you're dealing with any situation where your hands will be exposed to blood or any bodily fluids, but check first for holes and tears. As a preventive measure, have infection control kits available throughout your workplace. Include the following items. Disposable latex gloves, eye goggles or plastic face shields, and a pocket respirator or other barrier device for CPR. You can add these items to your regular first aid kits. If your co-worker has a minor accident that causes bleeding, try to have the victim bandage his or her own wound. This will reduce the possibility of other people being exposed to blood. If the injury is serious, call for the Emergency Response Team, or ERT. Members of the ERT should always wear personal protective equipment, such as disposable latex gloves, when treating anyone. They should also use pocket respirators or other CPR barrier devices. What if you believe there is no time to wait for the emergency response team and that any delay in giving first aid could be potentially fatal for your injured co-worker? Remember to take universal precautions. Wear latex gloves. Use a pocket respirator or other barrier device when performing CPR. If there is potential for bodily fluids to splash into your eyes, you should wear eye goggles or a face mask. Use anything practical to stop the bleeding and, at the same time, prevent exposure to blood. For example, a large quantity of paper towels or several layers of clothing. Your injured co-worker may not be bleeding visibly, but this does not mean there is no danger from blood-borne pathogens. Vomiting, burns, abrasions, head injuries and internal injuries can release bodily fluids that may be difficult to see. The need to take universal precautions is not over when the emergency has passed. When removing disposable gloves after use, roll the first glove off the hand inside out. Use the clean inside part of the first glove to remove the second glove. Never wash or attempt to disinfect disposable gloves for reuse. They must be placed in an approved biohazard bag and sent to a facility licensed for disposal of hazardous waste. Always wash your hands immediately after taking off the disposable gloves. If you take universal precautions, but have still been exposed to the victim's bodily fluids, you should wash the affected area thoroughly. If you think you could have been splashed in the eyes, bathe the eyes thoroughly using an eye wash. For other areas of the body, scrub thoroughly with soap and water. Wear rubber utility gloves when cleaning spills of blood or bodily fluids, but do not use them if they are cracked torn or are damaged in any way which may prevent them acting as an effective barrier. You must thoroughly wash the area that has been contaminated by blood, vomit or other bodily fluids as well as tools and any other items that may have been contaminated. Clean up using alcohol or diluted household bleach, one part bleach to nine parts water. Clothing and bandages that have been contaminated with blood or bodily fluids must be disposed of using an approved biohazard bag which must then be sent to a facility licensed to dispose of hazardous waste. Disinfect the gloves used in cleaning after use and always wash your hands after cleaning up blood or other bodily fluids. Do not eat, drink, smoke, apply cosmetics or lip balm or handle contact lenses until you have thoroughly washed your hands. Every incident involving exposure to blood or other bodily fluids should be immediately reported to your supervisor, who will ensure that the appropriate people are informed. Your employer may ask you to be tested by your company doctor, or you may request testing. If you are frequently at risk of exposure because of your occupation, or you are a member of an emergency response team, your employer can vaccinate you against hepatitis B. There is currently no vaccination against hepatitis C or HIV. You can catch a blood-borne disease if you are exposed to infected blood or bodily fluids. But these diseases, especially HIV, are difficult to catch unless you put yourself at risk. Use your common sense. Take universal precautions when dealing with blood or bodily fluids. Reduce your risk of exposure. And, like Joe and Maria, you'll protect not only yourself, but also your family and co-workers. It's worth it.